Oh
God this morning. But God, I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty for your presence.
sanctuary in online. I believe God has a blessing today with your name on it. I mean, with your name on it. It's, it's not for your neighbor, it's for you. Touch yourself. It's for me. It's for me. God has a blessing with your name on it. And so we invite one and all to come on in this house. Go ahead and share the link right now. You are a powerful instrument. Go ahead and share this link right now that others might join us in worship. And let's give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise on this second Sunday of Advent. We are in the season of Advent as we get ready to celebrate the coming of our Savior. It's only because of Jesus that you and I have an opportunity for the tree of life. And so we thank God and we give God the glory and the honor and the praise. Let us pray. God, we say thank you on this morning, God. We say thank you, God. We say thank you, God. 10,000 talks, we could not say thank you enough, God, because you have been that good to us, God. You have kept us and been better to us, God, than we've been to ourselves, God. And so we just praise you this morning and we give you glory this morning, God. And we are so grateful, God, that you have decided to bless us this day, a day we have never seen in creation, God, with mercy that are new this day, God. We're not living on yesterday's mercy or last week's mercy, God. You gave us a fresh batch this morning, God. And guess what, God? We are here to say that it has proven to be sufficient in our lives, God. We are not here because we look all cute and we've done everything that you told us to do. We are here because you love us. That's it. We are here, God, because you love us. That's it. And so we have come to honor you and to worship you right now. Now, God, I ask that you move in this worship experience, God. Be all that my brother and my sister need, God. And we make a vow, God, that when we leave this house, we will shout out loud everything we need. Thy hand has provided. We love you, God. We adore you. Guide us, hold thou great Jehovah. We are just pure in this old barren land. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Come on, stand all over this house as Pastor Cole Knight comes with our word. Hallelujah. Thank you. 
Thank you.
y'all a hand clap of praise. Let's say, let's celebrate Sister Rose for that addition of God using her and blessing her and blessing us. Good morning, church. Good morning. I hope you feel as good as you look. Would you just look at the person next to you and just say, good morning, how you doing? Just say, good morning, how you doing? Good morning, how you doing? Now speak a blessing over their life. Say, God's got a blessing with your name on it. Say, God, come on, you're not proper line, you're proper sign. Say, God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing with your name on it. Amen. Amen. Now, if you're excited about being in church on the first Sunday in December, would you put your blessed hands together and let's give God a hand clap of praise for all that God is doing in our midst. Amen.
down on bills and whatnot. And somebody needs to hear when you are faithful and put pride aside, God will make a way somehow. And so next year when we holler out about the angel tree, realize it could be your situation that we are helping. Amen? Amen. And when you do God's business, God has a way of seeing that he continually to bless you. The same day of the meeting, the next day, watch this, y'all. The L.A. Midnight Mission called and they said, because the city of David was our best distributor, we want you to come down here and get 3,000 toys. Ray Bay and Marcel Bay, 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 Ray Bay and Marc
Lord said to me, pray for Mother Esther Daniels, Mother Ali Frazier, Sister Barbara Lorraine, pray for Sister Willa and Brother Tyler Dash, pray for Dr. Karen Ireland, pray for Brother Andrew Ireland, Dr. Tamai Johnson, Sister Kenita Lewis, senior sister, pray for Mother Alma Thomas, the mother of our church, pray for Brother Fred G. Cousin Yolanda Robinson, pray for Nikita Sample, or Brother Marquis, baby Elijah, pray for Barbara Sparrow, John Downey, Walker Prosey Jr., pray for the McCray family, the Wendell family, Brother Richard Griffin, Brother Sammy Davis, Sister Wanda, Sister Keela, David Jason, pray for Uncle Nate Robinson, amen, Uncle Gus Briscoe, Sister Imani Hayes and Veronica Hayes, Oopsie Briscoe, Booker T. Stanley, and Eloise Tenner. Come on, pray, church. The writer says in James that the fervent, effectual prayers of the righteous will avail much. And what makes it fervent has nothing to do with the loudness or the length. What makes it fervent is the faith behind it. Anybody still believe in the power of prayer? Anybody know that God answers prayer? Come on, pray like you believe it. And let's give God the glory and the honor and the praise as Pastor Coleman Knight comes to pray for us one and all. Lie down in green pastures. You lead us with 
beside the still waters and you restoreth our soul. You leadeth us in the path of righteousness, but it's all for your name's sake. Yea, though we walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil. For thou art with us, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort us, and thou preparest a table before us, even, even in the presence of thy enemies, and thou anointest our heads with the heart. Our cup runneth over. Surely, surely, the news and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And Lord, we just want to dwell in your house for an eternity. You said in your word that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that you are Lord of all. So we thank you, Lord, for your word. Your word is where you told us to study to show ourselves approved. That a workman needs not to be ashamed. Rightly divine at the word of truth. So as we go into the book and study your word, we pray, Lord, that the word will be rightly divine. Every promise in the book is our word. Every chapter, every verse, every line. All are blessings of your love divine. Every promise in the book is ours. And Lord, we pray that as the word go forth in this pulpit today, that someone will hear the word and say, what must I do to be saved? So we just want to say thank you, Lord. Lord, when we have done all that you assigned us to do, when we've sung our last song and said our last prayer, when we've laid down our hymn books and Bibles, we pray, Lord, that you'll give us a peaceful hour somewhere, somewhere, somewhere in your kingdom where we can give your holy name the praises. As an humble servant, I go up to beg this prayer in Jesus' name. And may all the people of God say, Amen.
and found myself broken. Going to work every day, but broken. Coming to church, broken. Ministering sometimes, broken. One day God told me, Rose, I need you to worship me. Just like you worship me on Sunday morning, I need you to worship me at home. I said, God, I do worship. I not only lead worship, but when I'm in worship, I'm a worshiper. I love to worship. God said, there's, there's another place I want you to go in my presence where it's just me and you alone at the house. The first time I did it, I sat at my little keyboard at home by myself, giving a full-on worship session. Just me and God, not watching a YouTube video like what I can do. But God said, take the gift I gave you and just worship me with it. The Spirit of God filled my home. It filled my place. It's changed my life. I want to encourage anybody who's been hurting. I want to speak to anybody who has disappointment, depression, grief. God is saying, there's healing in my presence. God is saying, it's time for you personally to come to me and worship. Worship.
Amen. Come on, help me celebrate. Come on, help me celebrate.
is a ride out by the name of Micah. Micah, where y'all get the name Michael. Michael was given a hard task we talked about a couple of weeks back because he was sent to preach to the Israelites when the Israelites was in a state of apostasy. Preacher, what is apostasy? Apostasy is when you have accepted the life, death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but then you get brand new. Y'all act like you don't understand. Apostasy is when you pray about the situation. You tell everybody you praying to get out of the situation. You posting it on the gram. You posting it on Facebook and you're posting it on Twitter. You want everybody to pray for you. In fact, you share too much on the social media platform. But yet when God bring you out, you don't even have enough sense to pause and give God the glory and the honor. I'm talking to some real people today. You don't have enough sense to say, God, I know it was you. I know it was nobody but you. It wasn't my looks. It wasn't the degrees on the wall. It wasn't my whip. It wasn't my house. It wasn't my Mama and daddy and my cousin and them, it was nobody but you, God, because they've been seeing me in this situation and none of them could help or none of them would help. In fact, if they would have, I wouldn't have even been in this situation, God. But when I cried out to you in the midnight hour, God, I know it was nobody but you that brought me out. When I cried to you when I was in family turmoil, I know it was nobody but you that brought me out, God. When I cried on that job where they was talking crazy to me, it was nobody but God. When I was in school and I couldn't figure out what was going on, it was nobody but you, God. When I didn't have two nickels to rub together. God, it was nobody but you, God. When I was on the RTD, but now I got a whip, it was nobody but you, God. When I had nothing but a little old room, I was in a single dad, I got a big house, it was nobody but you, God. When I couldn't go to church and felt like I was worshiping with some worshipers, but yet you sent me to the city of David, God, it was nobody but you. And because, God, I know it was nobody but you, I'm not going to get brand, I'm not going to act all funny style. When you bring me out, God, my shout will match my breath. That's not what God of them did. That's not what God of them did. When God brought them out, they got big-headed and they got brand new. When God blessed them with the car, they drove the car on a Sunday morning everywhere but to church. They went to brunch and they went to the car wash and they stayed at home for a football game, but they didn't come to church. But when they got in trouble, the one they ran to was nobody but God. They didn't run to the Cowboys. They didn't run to Shane High Red. They ran to God. Well, the Israelites was doing wrong. And Micah was given the assignment to go tell them that they were doing wrong. I'm here to tell you, everybody wants to say keep it 100, but nobody wants to keep it 100. Everybody wants to act as if they've done everything that God has told them to do. In fact, that's the reason our churches are not filled right now. Because y'all come in here with all y'all your, your sanctity and you act as this. You are in this white and you act as if just because you know when to stand up and when to sit down, you should have a title on your seat and you look down everybody that come in here and don't know when to stand up and when to sit down. Well, let's keep it 100. You have not always known when to stand up and when to sit down. You have always not known how to usher God into the presence. You have not always known how to give God glory. And in fact, can I just give somebody an opportunity right now? for a praise break because you know how far God has brought you from and you know because of God and God alone there are some things you don't do no more and some things you don't say no more. Would you open up your mouth this morning and give God the harsh word that we preached about a couple of weeks back. And so when you get to chapter 3, the Bible says, I'm making my way to 7 y'all real quick. When you get to chapter 3, the Bible says that God come down and God be who God is. God says, I'm going to bless you. I am a God of a second and a third and a fourth chance. Can I pause right there to give somebody an opportunity to celebrate God because you realize that God has given you another chance. You messed up, but he's giving you another. You messed up, but you you know, you messed up, but now you know that his grace is sufficient. Now you know that the blood still works. And so God 
begins to tell them in chapter 3, y'all got to get yourself together. Y'all got to get right because y'all have not done what I told you to do. And so he begins to declare that if y'all don't get yourself right, you are going to a place that y'all don't want to be. See, there comes a time when we just can't preach howdy, howdy. I'm here to tell you heaven is real and heaven is real. And I want you heaven is real and hell is real. And I want you to know that if you don't Life, death, and resurrection, the Bible says that into the early gates. And so he gives them that prophecy in chapter 4. But then he tells them and he encourages them in chapter 5, y'all going to be all right. Because I am sending a Savior, the one y'all getting ready to celebrate on the 25th. I am sending a Savior and he will come out of the David's Davidic line. He will come from the tribe of Judah. And y'all will get this Savior and he will enter of this world away and so he lets them know but y'all got to stay with me don't get the big head don't run away just stay with me when others are trying to pull you away just stay when others are trying to take your attention stay with me that's why early in the morning please 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 brother and sister don't reach for your cell phone when you wake up and you open your eyes don't reach for your laptop don't reach for your e when you wake up early in the morning before you do anything, can I just give you a strong suggestion? Would you just stop right there and give God the glory and the honor and the privilege? God has blessed you to open your eyes and say, God, this is the day that you have made God and I shall rejoice and be glad. And that is an opportunity before you get real busy. You know, some of y'all are real busy. Before you get real busy, that's an opportunity for you to say, God, I bless you on this day. God, God, I worship you on this day. God, I ask that you would order my steps and everything I do in this day. You and you alone might get the glory. But that's not what many of us do. When we wake up in the morning, the first thing we do is start grabbing for that cell phone and then we start putting all that garbage inside of us. People being petty. People being messy. People gossiping about us. And then we start retweeting. And then we start, not only are we reading the gossip, but we start sharing the gossip and the mess with other people. You better learn how to put that trash down and give God the glory. Why would you start your day ingesting trash? Why would you start your day ingesting mess? That's why I'm glad to be in the worship this morning. Because I'm starting my day with my mind staying. Am I talking to anybody that's come to worship God? And you want to give God and you don't care how your neighbor is sitting there looking all cute. You don't care how your neighbor is sitting there looking like a bum on the lawn. Because you know if it had not been for God this week, you would be told him, would you go ahead? Anybody who knows who worship that God, would you go ahead right now and 
and brand new. I did it all for y'all, but yet you still strayed away. And then he says, you remember how when Balak was trying to go get Balaam to put a curse on y'all in Numbers 22? Read it when you get home. Balaam was trying to come and put a curse on y'all, but I made the mouth of a donkey open up and began to speak a blessing. And that's why Balaam could not curse you. If God could make a mouth of a donkey open up and talk English, why do you think God can't step in your situation? Why do you think God can't heal your body? Why do you think God can't, man, am I talking to him? If you don't need something, I understand why you sit there and look cute, but if you know you need God to do something in your life, would you go ahead right now, throw your head back and throw your hands up and give God the glory? Would you go ahead and give God the praise? Brother, 
is God, if he did it or she did it, would you remove them from all iniquities, God? Move them from sin as far as the east is from the west. But you don't hear gossip and go tweet about it. You don't hear gossip and call somebody else. You don't hear gossip and run to the church hotline and say, girl, I heard, man, I heard. You begin to pray for individuals. I get so sick and tired of you hypocrites that come in here and you're white and you want everybody to move like you want them to move. I'm not moving like you want to move. I may move different. I may worship them with the waving of my hand. I may worship them with the clapping of my hand. I'm not going to come in here and act all cute because you don't know all the hell I've been through last week. You don't know all the struggles I had to go through last week. When I come in this house, you ought to be happy. I'm 
verses of chapter 6 and he begins to list to them what could possibly happen if they stray away. He begins to tell them that the city would be ruined. He begins to tell them, and it sounds like America right now. He says the rich people will be violent. The inhabitants will be liars. Their tongues will speak deceitfully. He says, I will begin to destroy the land. They will eat and they won't be satisfied. Their stomachs will still be empty even when they have eaten a whole lot. They will store up stuff, but it will never be enough America. They will plant seeds, but a harvest will never come. They will press olives, but it still won't have no oil. You have observed my word, and you have strayed away. And so now Michael comes in chapter 7. I'm bringing it home, y'all. Michael comes in chapter 7, and he begins to speak. A word. Michael comes in chapter 7, and yes, he knows all the darknesses that is around him, but he remembers God is on yeah. his side. He starts off in chapter 7. He says, God, look at my situation. I have come, and I'm a day late and a dollar short. I have come, and I missed the sale, the candle sale yesterday at Bath and Body. I have come in the summer in the summer season and there are no crops coming up. He begins to speak about the land. He says idolatry is all around me. Folks don't even come to church like they used to come to church. There used to be a time you didn't have to email and tweet and retag somebody. They just realized on Sunday I need to be in somebody's house worshiping God. But now you got to try to entice the people. We'll feed you. You got to try to entice the people. We'll give you something free. But in the coming to idolatry but yet when you needed God you wanted everybody to pray for you when you needed God you said Father I stretch my hands to thee Michael was talking about the situation and he said not only is it idolatry but you can't trust nobody in these days there used to be a time when somebody gave you their word you could take their word to the bank but now people's word are like three dollar bills they'll look you right in your face and tell you a lie not a little lie, not a white lie, but a big lie they'll tell you a lie and mean nothing for it, he says now this is all around him he says now people are like a wall of thorns, if you get too close they're going to prick you if you get too close they're going to cut you, am I talking to anybody who knows there's been a time in this last season when your folks called you, you were there for them. There was a time in this season, the phone couldn't even ring one time, and you was picking up where you at, what I need to do. But now when you call people, they send you the voicemail. Now when it's your turn to be blessed, they won't even pick up. But I'm not talking to anybody who knows that even though you have experienced those type of situations, yet here you are looking all good. Yet they meant it for evil, but God has worked it out for your good. Yet they talk slick about you, but now you're looking good. Would you go ahead right now and give God the glory and the honor and the praise? Michael says that not only can you not trust your neighbors, he says you can't even trust the ones you call bay and boo because the ones you are embracing, it says that in verse 5, the ones you are embracing will lie even when you're hugging them, will lie even when you're showing them a good time, will lie even when you're up on a mountain telling them how you're going to give them the word. They are lying to you. Michael says, it's all around me, God. And he says, not only are the bays in the booze line, but the family is in this court. A son can't even like his father. And a daughter don't even respect her mother. He says it in the text, verse 6. He says, the in-laws are fighting and fussing. And he says, you can't even get no support in your own family. You ask your family, they'll go and support everybody. But then when they need a hookup, they'll come and ask you for a hookup. Am I talking to anybody in this house that want to give God the glory? But right in the midst of all of this turmoil, Michael begins to speak a word over his own life and speak a word for the people. Touch your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Don't touch him. Look at your neighbor and say, we're going to be all right. I don't care what you're going through. We're going to be all right. I don't care what you're dealing with. We're going to be all right. Michael begins to speak. He 
here it is in verse 7. Micah says, I'll watch even in the midst of this darkness. I'll watch and my hope is in God and God alone. I didn't put no hope in the president. I didn't put no hope in the mail. I didn't put no hope on no preacher or no bishop. My hope is in God and God alone. And I know in due season God's going to make a way out of no way. And the reason I couldn't put my hope in man because what I need God to do this time, a man cannot do. What I need God to do in this season, a woman cannot do. I don't need God to come. I need God to do it all the way. And so I'm putting my, am I talking to anybody right now who's putting your whole hope in God? You putting your whole trust in God? And Michael begins to say, he begins to say, because I put my hope in God in verse 7, he says, I'll wait for God. Now, I gave you this text, we're going to be all right, because I remember the words of Kedah. It was Kedah who was encouraging our millennials in contemporary times that we going to be all right. It was Kedah that said, wouldn't you know, we've been hurt, been down before, when our pride was low, looking at the world like, where do we go? And we hate Pope Paul. We want to kill him dead in the streets for sure. I'm at the preacher's door. My knees get weak and my gun might blow, but we gon' be alright. It was Micah text right now that lets us know that we gon' be alright. Micah said my enemies are gloating and they laughing at me, but they not gon' gloat long. Am I talking to anybody right now that want to see God bring you out? He says you're laughing at me right now, but it's be for long because God is getting ready to bring me out. God is getting ready to bring me out and bring me over. Am I talking to anybody right now who feels like you going to be alright? No matter what's going on against you, storm waters are up to your neck. You tired of being in the same situation and nobody coming to help you. I got good news. Help is on the way. I got good news. Help is on the way.
when God elevates you, the text says, as he elevates you, he's going to pull your enemies down. Because here's what, when God bless you in this next season, God's going to get you in a place that you won't have to look over your shoulder. You'll be surrounded with your kind. Everybody not your kind. You'll be surrounded by your people. Everybody not your people. God said he'll elevate you. You go up. They go down. But you'll be all right. You will be all right. You will be all right. Jesus name.
Praise God, praise God. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth.
for your offering envelopes. Please don't forget to invite family and friends to come out on this Saturday for the free toys. We see you at Bible study on Tuesday. Thank you to all of our guests. First time guests for coming. Please come back anytime. You're welcome anytime to come back. Amen? We gonna be alright. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless with exceeding joy to the only wise and true God be glory, majesty, dominion, and power. Now henceforth and forevermore, let us all say together, Amen. Amen, amen. amen. Love you much. Have a wonderful day.